When Van Gogh came into the world, he was given no mercy. Born into this cruel world, into a family of a priest and a painter. At an early age, Van Gogh's brother passed away, one of the many hardships that haunted his life. Van Gogh's family struggled to earn a living, and by age 15, he was forced to quit school and start working. Fortunately, he found a job with his uncle as an art dealer and fell in love with art. Van Gogh proposed to his landlady's daughter, but he was rejected, which scarred him for life. After this, he had his first thoughts of devoting his life to God and the church through his artwork. In 1933, Adolf Hitler took over Germany. Part of Hitler's Nazi regime was to destroy and diminish degenerate art, or all art which did not have a connection to the Aryan race. In 1939, after the Degenerate Art Show, a stolen Van Gogh self-portrait was lost forever after it sold for U.S. $40,000. The painter on the road to Tarascon was a victim of the Second World War and was lost forever. The Allied forces bombed Magdeburg setting fire to Kaiser Friedrich Museum, which contains stolen art, most likely the way Van Gogh's Painter on the Road to Tarascon was lost. The Allies were on a mission to save the degenerate art from the Nazi regime, but what is unknown is how many pieces of art were lost in the bombings in 1945 in Matchburg. The Kaiser Friedrich Museum was completely destroyed. Over 6,000 lives were lost, and 190,000 people were left homeless. His influence was huge in 20th century art, and specifically the artist Francis Bacon, who took Van Gogh's Painter on the Road to Tarascon to heart. Bacon believed in Van Gogh, and he also believed in what Van Gogh had said, that artists express themselves by painting their emotions and not just reconfigurations. Many people have interpreted the painter on the road to Tarascon in different ways. Many depict this painting as an outsider, a painter in his shadow, not accepted by society and alone on the road. Others depict it as the weary, weary traveler stuck in the scorching sun because of the massive load of stuff on his back, his sun hat, and the unique bright yellow all the way across the picture from the overhead sun. The question is, how did Van Gogh see his own work? I think he wanted it to be interpreted in different ways. He wanted people to try and figure out what this means and how he was feeling that day. Here we have a classic example of the Nazi regime stealing precious art. If this notebook is authentic, it makes us ask the question, how many things did we not find? How many more works of art or tiny sketchbooks were stolen? This box is normally locked up in a bank vault. But Doretta Pepper has decided that it's time to show off the contents to the world. The notebook is from the Royal Academy of Art in Brussels, where Van Gogh was a student in the late 19th century. Laboratory tests have confirmed the age and fidelity of the paper. This is the famous Per Tanguy. Here is another peasant, maybe is the one of the uh, persons of the potato eaters. This is another person of the potato eaters. Mrs. Pepper has been working to authenticate the book since finding it among the possessions of her late father, who was a member of the Greek resistance during the Second World War. They attacked 
the trains when the, the Nazis were going home, were leaving Greece. This is the Nazi stamp. What is not clear is who the notebook belonged to originally and how it fell into the Nazis' hands. Now, according to Greek law, it is Mrs. Pepper's property. It's an in inheritance from my father, and us, nobody asked for it. Uh, it's mine. <laughs> More than 60 years after being liberated from this railway, the notebook was examined by a Greek art expert called Athanasio Celia, and this is his report. Sadly, Mr. Celia is too ill to appear on camera, but I've spoken to him on the phone and he's absolutely insistent that this notebook is the work of Vincent van Gogh. This photograph, said to be of van Gogh, found alongside the notebook, is also being put forward as further proof of validity. A specialist dentist compared it to another known photograph of the artist by measuring the proportions of the head and face. As far as our measurements and our method, uh, it's very precise, so we can uh, say for sure that this is a picture of uh, Vincent van Gogh. Vincent van. He has many signatures. If the notebook is internationally accepted as genuine, it could sell for more than $5 million. Mrs. Pepper believes it could also prove that some famous so-called Van Goghs are nothing more than fakes. Malcolm Brabant, BBC News, Athens.